Call the order of the meeting, uh, July 16th, regular council meeting. Will the clerk call the, will the clerk read the quote, please? <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. For changes to be of any true value, they've got to be lasting and consistent. Thank you. Clerk will call the roll. If you'd like to push number one, please. Bill, thank you. 15 present. Here is a quorum. Tonight we have Dylan Lindau from Troop 801 joining us tonight, and he will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Dylan? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you and welcome. Tonight we'd like to um, approve the minutes. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve the minutes of the last council meeting. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of the last council meeting. Is there any changes or discussion? See none, clerk will call the roll. Fifteen eyes. Motion carried. Tonight we'd like to introduce the new executive director of the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation. If uh, Gary Dalmas and Randy Hopper would like to come up. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilmen and Councilwomen. I'm Gary Dalmas. I'm the chair of the Sheboygan County Economic Development. Development Corporation. And first of all, I want to say thank you for your support for the past two years. Uh, we have exciting news in that we have a new executive director that started on July 9th, and I wanted to bring Randy here to introduce him to you and have him say a few words. So with that, I'd like to introduce our new director, Randy Hopper from the SCEDC. Thank you, Gary. Uh, first off, let me just say it's, it's great to be here. I'm looking forward to working with everybody. I had a, a great meeting with the mayor last week, and uh, I'm looking forward to all of us trying to drive economic development in this area. I think a lot of the problems we have in our state, in our county, start with helping people find an opportunity for a job. I'm looking forward to partnering with everybody on the council to try to get that accomplished. Uh, please feel free to call me anytime. Uh, I would love to set up one-on-ones with every one of you. And so I'll be calling you uh, to do that. We get a little bit of an opportunity to, to discuss the future. And thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Randy, and welcome to Shavoya. Thank you very much. City Clerk, do we have anybody with the, for the public forum? Uh, yes, we do. First on the list is Dave Gass. Dave, can I have your home address, please? 1921 Arrowhead Court. Okay. And you can go ahead. Thank you, everybody. Um, thank you for allowing me to speak. I'm Dave Gass, uh, I'm an attorney with Rody Dale's Law Firm. I'm here in behalf of Brett's Towing and Brett Graf, Graf. And I'm um, here on the resolution to award the uh, contract for towing services. And um, Brett's perfectly capable of talking on this subject, but it's an emotional subject, so I'm here to talk more, to articulate his position on this as much as to be really legal. Um, but what I'd like to uh, suggest in, in our position is, Brett's position, is that uh, the current contract uh, of awarding or the process of awarding to one bidder is not necessary. Um, there's another arrangement that I would submit as a fairer arrangement to the city um, and it accomplishes the task for the uh, police department. Uh, and I'm not here to criticize any of the other uh, bidders. They're all capable uh, bidders. Some, I think, are more capable than others, but they all have the ability to provide towing services. Um, 
But unfortunately, the current process forces the city to pick one, even when that disadvantages uh, businesses that are tax paying within the city. And I don't think that's fair when you don't have to do that. And why do I think you don't have to do that? It's because there's another arrangement out there that I believe accomplishes the city purposes and is still fair for the businesses, and that's the rotational arrangement whereby you rotate um, among the qualified bidders and you don't pick one. And why do I say that? Well, first of all, what are the city's interests in a towing contract? I would submit that the city's interests in the towing contract are really twofold. One, how, how much do they have to pay for law enforcement, uh, for um, evidentiary uh, tows that they're responsible for? You're worried about what, what is your cost going to be? And secondly, clearing the scene of an accident efficiently and expediently. And I would submit that a, a rotational basis does that just right, as well as being fair to all the different businesses that are, are bidding. And why do I say that? Um, because the qualification process will make it fair. You only get to be on the rotation if you qualify. But more importantly, is there's already an example that's been in place for decades, and that's the county. The county's been doing a, a rotational system for decades. They have quadrants where people are rotated based on the quadrant they're in. And as I understand, it's worked uh, very well. And I would just ask that the council really um, commit to doing a rotational basis. I understand there may be some concern about, do you need some more time to basically implement that? Um, and I would agree you probably do. I don't think you need more than three to six months. I could be wrong on that, but I, I would think you could put that together based on the fact that we've got a model in place. Um, and that you move to that, and that way then you can accomplish the goals for the city law enforcement as well as um, are fair to all the bidders, especially those that are within the city limits, um, paying taxes and providing jobs uh, to individuals um, in, in our city. Uh, so with that, I would um, support and would ask you to consider uh, going to a rotational, committing go to going to a rotational basis um, I understand there would be some lead time. I don't think it needs to be longer than three to six months, but that you'd go to a rotational basis um, as the best way of accomplishing the goals for the city and being fair to the bidding uh, tax paying businesses in the city. Thank you. Thank you, David. And then we have Calvin, and I don't want to butcher your name, so it's Calvin. <laughs> If you could spell it for me, that would be terrific. Sure. K E S W E D E R. Kesswetter. Kesswetter. Okay. I've been butchered for years. So uh, I know. just didn't want to do it to you. <laughs> You'll have five minutes, sir. All right. Thank you. I'm going to follow my notes because I'm not as polished a speaker as Mr. Gass. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and the entire council for giving us the opportunity to speak in, in, before you. My name is Calvin Kessler. I'm a service manager for Depot Auto Service and Towing. I've been doing this for 14 years. The existing towing contract that is scheduled, was scheduled to end as of May 1st, the one that we're in right now, has been postponed several times already, bringing us to where we are today. Now I have two main issues and I really am going to try to be brief. Uh, Mr. Groff brought up the suggestion of switching to a con or, or from the contract system that we have now in the city of Sheboygan to a rotational system as exists in the county. I want all to know that Depot is 100% behind that concept. We believe it can work. We can work together to make this work. <clears throat> all the person lesser began to investigate the idea, but she ran into some roadblocks, kind of slowing it down a little bit. And she proposed at the last PPNS meeting a one-year contract to allow time to research this issue. Now, we understand it takes time, as Mr. Gass mentioned, but we believe that this could be accomplished by the end of the year. And we would like to propose that the city and depot continue to extend this contract that we're in right now, just like we have since May, keep on going to the end of the year, and then by then we should be able to have time to work out the details to get a rotating list working. Now at that initial meeting with the PPNS, the police chief and finance director recommended arrow towing for this. 
and only one older person raised an objection and questioned them about their choice and this being the best selection for the city of Sheboygan. And no real true answer came from that. Now I'm asking you as the committee as a whole, please consider the facts. Number one, arrows prices may appear to be lower on the bid, but the contract allows for towing when a tow is done outside the city limits, they can be charged mileage at $1 per mile round trip. Now I interpret this to mean that they can add mileage charges to every tow to their facility. That makes the price higher than even the highest bid that was given from the person in the city of Sheboygan. Two, for some, the car that just got towed is the only one they have. They need to get to their personal belongings or to their vehicle. They need to walk, take the bus, ride in a cab, or find a friend to take them there. If it's located here in the city, that's pretty easy. But if it's way out in the country, that's going to be much more difficult for the citizens of Sheboygan. Three, the contract requires the contracted tow company to respond in 20 minutes. Now, I use MapQuest to pick three common locations that we have been called to by the police department. Now, keep in mind, these travel times are perfect conditions, no bad weather, no traffic jams, no road constructions, and being in your vehicle driving. From Arrow Shop on Highway 32 to City Hall, it takes 13 minutes. For Depot, it takes one. From Arrow to Whedon Creek and South 12th Street, 18 minutes. For Depot, 11. And from Arrow to 4th and North Avenue, 14 minutes. And for Depot, it's seven. Now it's clear that a contractor outside the city is not practical and a 20 minute or less time allowance that's in the bid proposal would be pushed to the limit and or exceeded. And the only way to make it in 20 minutes is to speed. Snow emergencies, when we do snow emergencies in the city of Sheboygan, they go very rapidly. There's no time to be driving out to the country to drop cars off come back and pick up the next one. They have to be done very fast. Fifth, and my final point, as of right now, Arrow does not have any secured storage on their site that we are aware of. You drive by on Highway 32, you'll see crash cars sitting all over in the open on Highway 32. According to the bid request, you must have secured storage, meaning a fence with a lock or a building. We don't know if they have permission to even be putting that many cars on that property. So despite the recommendation that has come through, we are asking, please consider what is in the best interest of the city of Sheboygan and its residents. Having to drive all the way out to the country, and we're not talking about just outside the city limits, we're talking about about eight miles outside the city, will be an inconvenience to the public as well as to the citizens of Sheboygan. Excuse me, Kelvin, would you like an extra minute? Um, sure, I'll just wrap it up in a few Motion seconds. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, go ahead. Um, now, as far as picking the, the lowest price bid, right in the bid proposal on the first page, the city reserves the right to reject any and all bids and award the bid that is deemed the most advantageous to the city of Sheboygan, not the cheapest. And it even states that although price is a, a major concern, it is not the only factor in determining who will achieve or who will acquire this contract as it sits. So the decision that you make tonight is not going to only impact the city and its residents, but also local businesses, businesses here in the city of Sheboygan paying city taxes and the people they employ. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Kelvin. That would be it. Thank you. Under Mayor's announcements, I want to remind everybody, uh, <coughs> Eastfelt's Lakeshore Weekend is the 27th, 28th, and 29th at South Pier. Hope to see you all there. Uh, August 7th, we have National Night Out, which the Fire Department and Police Department uh, participate in, in um, Walk Against Crime, that will be led by the Sheboygan Police Department and the Sheboygan Sheriff's Department. Again, I'd like to see all the citizens, and welcome all the citizens there. That's all the announcements I have. We now have a hearing, an amended to the text of the city ordinance, zoning ordinance relating to temporary signs so as to add new subsection for non-commercial temporary signs. Is there anybody 
wanting to be heard. Is there anybody wanted to be heard? Is there anybody wanting to be heard? Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion to close the hearing. Second. It's been moved and seconded to close the hearing. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. Fifteen eyes. Motion carries. Consent agenda, Alderman Hammond. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file all ROs and accept and adapt all RCs, put all resolutions and ordinances upon their passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept and file <coughs> all ROs, accept and file all RCs, and put upon passage all resolutions. There would be three, one through three, nine. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. <clears throat> done. Get it. I really you promise. <laughs> Fifteen eyes. Motion carried. Communication four one will be referred to law and licensing. Except in adopt the B for the five one through five eight will be referred. All reports of officers. Six one, a resolution by Alderman Hammond authorizing retaining outside legal counsel to represent the city in a matter. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd ask uh, for a suspension of the rules. Second. So move and seconded for suspension of the rules. Is there any discussion on suspension? Hearing none, we'll vote on suspension first. Fifteen ayes. Motion carried. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that we pass the resolution. Second. It's been moved and seconded to pass the resolution. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Fifteen eyes again. Motion carried. 6-2, a resolution by Alderman Heidemann authorizing executing a contract between the city and Moss Associates, LLC. Alderman Heidemann. Thank you, Mayor. First, I need a motion to suspend the rules. Second. It's been moved and seconded to suspend the rules. Discussion under suspending the rules. Hearing none, we'll vote on suspending the rules first. Fifteen eyes to suspend. Okay. Motion carried. Alderman Heidemann. Make a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded to put the resolution upon its passage. Is there any discussion on the resolution? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Fifteen eyes to pass. Motion carried. Six three through six ten will be referred. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd ask that uh, six ten also be referred to finance um, as it is a uh, budget-related item. Um, thank you. In addition to strategic fiscal planning. Alderman Hammond, can we... Um, I think Alderman Bourne is having a committee of the whole. Can we do a, a referral? Alderman Decker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I'd also ask to have it referred to committee of the whole. So it will be... Number 10 will be referred to... Strategic Committee of the Whole and Finance. Thank you. 7 1. Report a Committee of Law and Licensing recommending denying beverage license number 8945. Alderman Vanderwilly. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Under discussion, Alderman Vanderwilly. Is Erin Vricky here this evening? She is here. Um, she appeared before our committee on or last week. Um, a little history, last year, 2011, in February of 2011, um, she applied for her license. She was granted, even though she had failed to reveal um, one of her, her only violation. So we sent her a letter granting the license and told her to um, be sure to put that on her application. She was called before us again um, because she, since that underage alcohol consumption in 2009. Through 2011, she had 
or during 2011, she had two additional underage alcohols as well as an underage loitering. So the committee voted four to one to deny the license. Thank you. Would you like to address the committee, I mean the council? Go ahead. Um, all right, I work at Hopsaven. I, last March, I had uh, underage and loitering. And Excuse me, could you speak a little louder there? Yes. Having, thank you. Um, in March of last year, I had an underage and a loitering. Um, I had an underage because I was present at a place of alcohol. I didn't blow anything. That was in August. Um, I forgot to put that on my, when I reapplied. Um, basically, I'm here because it is my full-time job. It's my main source of money. I've never gotten in trouble at my job. I've never over served an underager. Never, nothing has ever gone wrong at my job. I've been a bartender for three years. And I'd like to be approved and not denied. All right, thank you. Is there any discussion from the council? Alderman Vandewiele. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, one thing that we did find out during our meeting is that um, one of her violations for underage alcohol was um, she was in a bar in Sheboygan with an um, invalid ID. Uh, and so our concern is how can she properly ID people and um, say no to somebody coming in with a All right. um, fake ID. Is there any questions of, of the applicant? Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Ma'am, would you lose your job if you don't have this license or are you still gonna be able to work but not close the establishment? I will not be able to work. My hours are full time, so they'd find someone else. Thank you. All the men raised my question. No, no Same question. question. Same question. Alderman Kath. Thank you, Mary Van Akron. Um, Again, is it a question for her? It's otherwise. It pertains to her. Okay. Yes. I would. February fifteenth of twenty eleven. Uh, you filled out an application, and it came before law and licensing. Okay. And um, uh, Jody Vander was on that committee. I was uh, Bill Wagner, uh, Wangaman, and Tom Bowers, and the vote was three to one to grant the license. I was the one that voted against it. I okay. thought we should have called you in. That was in February. In March, you're telling this committee last week that um, you had an underage alcohol, underage lottery, and um, you showed a fake ID just a month after you were given a bartender's license. You showed a fake ID. At that time, you probably should have been before the committee last year. So this year, when you renewed, you know, you've got four violations and you're not even 21 yet, you've had four violations. And that is why we voted, you know, not to renew the license. That, that's a big deal to have an underage to have a fake ID in a bar when you have a bartender's license. That is a big deal. Thank you. Um, I realize it's a big deal. I learned my license since then, the underage in August. I, re I didn't drink anything. I was on a campsite. No one was 21. I was the only one who didn't blow anything. Um, no one was 21, so no one took the, said it was their alcohol, so I got a fee for being there, I guess, and I lost my license in March. I actually didn't lose it till May 4th to July 4th. I haven't been in any trouble since then. I've learned my license, or my. Any other questions for the applicant? Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, all the violations that have been, uh, I guess, noted, are all, all those are personal violations. None of them have occurred at work. Those are all on your personal time. Yes. Okay, and I guess just for the committee members, was, was that the case Can't as well in the committee? There was no actual violations at the place of employment where she was granted the license? Or were they all personal violations? All personal, but she did go uh, walk into a bar with a fake ID. Okay, thank you. Any other questions of the applicant? All right, thank you. We'll return it back to the floor then. Any discussion on the floor? <clears throat> See none, clerk will call the roll. Just to clarify, an I vote would be to accept and adopt and deny the license, just so you're clear. I 
Nine eyes, six no's. Motion carries. 7-2, committee report from law and license denying beverage license number 9597, Alderman Vanderwilly. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Any under discussion? Alderman Vanderwilly. Is Amanda Stater here this evening? She's not here. We invited her to our committee uh, twice and she did not show up either time. Is there any further discussion on the committee report? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. Seven three, a report from committee of law and licensing recommending denying beverage operator license 8545. Alderman Vanderwiller. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Is Nathan Getch here this evening? He is not here. Um, the committee did vote four to one to deny his license, and we also had a police recommendation to uh, deny it. Thank you. Is there any other discussion on the RC? Hearing none, the committee will call the roll. I mean, the clerk will call the roll. Fifteen ayes. Motion carried. 7-4, report from P Public Protection and Safety recommending sending documents to the council to have them look into obtaining grant money for an abatement survey. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. Seven five is a report of committee from finance recommending filing documents submitted to communication from Meals and Wheels, Meals on Wheels, stating they have submitted an offer to purchase property behind Taylor Drive property. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Van Akron. I would make a motion to send this back to finance. <clears throat> Second. It's been moved and seconded to re-refer to finance. Under discussion, Alderman Bourne. Under discussion, Mayor, this is a wonderful organization. Has nothing to do with the organization, but I think uh, finance should take another look at uh, the price that we're getting for this land. It might be setting a dangerous precedent for future sales out on that Shukert property. That's why I'd like it sent back to finance for further consideration. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Motion is to refer to finance. Clerk will call the roll. Sure. Thirteen ayes, two noes. Motion carries. <clears throat> RC from P Public Protection and Safety recommending authorizing into authorizing entering into a contract for provision for towing vehicles. Alderman Vanacker. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would uh, move that the RC be accepted and adopted and the substitute resolution be put upon its passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the RC put, uh, be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Can I ask all the aldermen to speak up into their microphones? We're having trouble tonight with the air conditioning stuff people hearing. So speak louder and speak into your microphones, please. Alderman Bourne. Under discussion. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I was wondering if we could have the uh, representative from the police department uh, give us the department's opinion on the rotational, uh, the rotational system on the towing as advocated by one of the people at the uh, public forum tonight. I believe two of them talked about it. Captain Cobb. Good evening. The uh, police department is not an advocate of a rotational towing system. Uh, we are an advocate for a towing contract of three years. The reason I say this, I know that the Sheriff's Department has a rotational towing system. We have also in the past been on a rotational towing system. We tow over 300 cars a year in one department. Uh, the problems that arose in a rotational towing system 
that we experienced back prior to 1996 would still be in place today even though we have a computer generated rotation. Uh, the problems we experienced in the past were uh, questioning who gets to be within the towing list. Once they're in, with, in the towing list, how do you set the prices on what they're going to charge for a tow? How do you go back and audit who's on a tow? Uh, more importantly, fighting, interfighting between tow truck drivers on their perception of whose turn it is to be called for a tow. These are all reasons that we got away from a rotational list into a contract system to begin with. Uh, with a contract bid, with a contract tow service, we have control over uh, the price of tows under certain conditions, uh, what's going to happen with cars that are towed. Uh, we have a lot more involvement in ensuring that uh, a car that is towed is available back to the uh, person who owns the car in the first place. Uh, because we have those arrangements spelled out ahead of time with the, with the company that we contract with. So that is, that is really our, you know, our main purpose and our desire to stay with a towing contract. Thank you. Before you leave, that... I, I would like to follow up if I could. Sure. Alderman Bourne. Uh, Captain Cobb, uh, do you consider it to be one of your criteria that time is of the essence to get a car picked up? And I, I know the gentleman quoted some times... Uh, for for a local tow operation and then of course you have to take into consideration during the winter when the when the streets are really bad so is time of time of the essence is that important to the department yes time time's important we have uh, we have limits within the time bit or we have time limits within the bit itself uh, in the last 16 years I don't ever remember can't we've never canceled a contract or, or tried to get out of a contract because of tardiness and showing up at a scene. Uh, we have questioned and asked for an explanation from time to time uh, because of an extended amount of time. Uh, certainly we understand under certain conditions uh, there is going to be occasions where the 20 minutes is exceeded. Uh, we don't want that to be our operating principle. So, I have, I have one more if I could, Mayor. One more. Thank you. And that is the other point that the gentleman brought up. Has it been verified by the committee or the department whether the company in Sheboygan Falls does indeed have uh, a secure area to store the cars? It has not been verified by the department. They have uh, they've accepted the bid, and it would be terms of the contract. If they, if they violate the terms of the contract, we'd be out of the contract. Thank you. Thank you. I have two lights on, Alderman Hammond and Alderman Donahue. Do you have questions of the captain or? Okay. Thank you, Captain. Then Alderman Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, as an initial uh, matter, <clears throat> I am loath to interfere with a committee recommendation. Um, that's why we have committees and that, that's why their work is so important. But with the exception that proves the rule. Um, I will speak uh, regarding concerns that I have based on the information that I have received that the second bid, which was from Depot Towing, was approximately $4 per call less than the winning bid. Thankfully, thankfully municipalities do structure bids to indicate that price is not the only criterion that we look at. We look at quality of service, we look at sort of the bang that you get for the buck. For the reasons that were outlined actually by uh, both speakers, um, it would indicate to me that, um, that there are significant concerns about just going with the lowest bid here. Secondly, and, and the reason that I would need to vote against this is that if in fact the amount of money is relatively small, I can't see taking that business out of the city of Sheboygan. Um, I think that we need to to the extent that we can, within prudent financial parameters, of course, support local businesses as best we can. Um, if I do have any of that information wrong as it was presented to me, uh, I do apologize, but I, uh, based on the information that I did receive, um, I'll be voting against this resolution. Thank you, Alderman Donahue. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, Alderman Donahue did a wonderful job of stealing my thunder. I certainly appreciate that. Um, but I also have uh, a little bit of a concern, um, the time factor notwithstanding um, and all else being relatively equal, 
I would much prefer to keep it inside of the city of Sheboygan with taxpayers that are paying taxes inside the city of Sheboygan. I understand we don't have a bi-local ordinance, um, but on the flip side, you know, these guys are paying taxes inside the city of Sheboygan. Um, my understanding there hasn't been a service issue and all else being equal again, why wouldn't we keep it here? Um, so I also um, will not be supporting this and would strongly encourage taking a look at other alternatives for this. I know the police department may not be a big fan of the rotational system, um, but I think at some point maybe uh, a further review of that might be warranted um, with the police department's involvement to figure out if there's a way to make this work. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Alderman Riesler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just as a, a point, um, I have a personal and professional working relationship with many people involved in this, so I'll be abstaining. Thank you. Alderman Kauff. Thank you, Mayor Van Akron. Um, I was actually at one of the public protection and safety meetings, and there was a number that was thrown out. Uh, one of the bidders mentioned it was a $3 million contract, that three-year. Is that, does that have um, teeth to it? Is, is this a three million, if this was a three-year contract, would this be a million-dollar contract? I, all them in, sorry. Thank you, Mayor. When I had the meetings with the police department and um, everyone else involved, the police department, maybe we can bring them up, them up said that it was not a million dollar contract. It was more like a hundred thousand dollar contract over the three years. I suggested we made it a one-year contract. It'll come due at the same time the county does, giving us a year's time to be able to find out the best solution for our city, whether we go on rotation or another method. And so I did not um, make a motion to do the three-year contract. I made a motion to do a one-year contract. Then took the um, recommendation of our police department and our finance um, our um, person and took their recommendation and suggested that Arrow had gotten it, but it is not a three million dollar contract nor is it a one million dollar contract. It's possibly a one hundred thousand dollar contract over three years. From Ald my understanding, I guess the police department could clear that up much better than I could. Alderman Lassard or, or the chairman, um, we're talking a one year contract. Would this end then in April of 2000? that we'd be looking at the next contracts again, or are we talking a year from today's date? I bet. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and maybe Steve would be able to enlighten us more on the legal aspect of that, but I believe if, I, if the contract was due to end in May, it would probably be until next May. Um, again, as Alderman Lassard pointed out, she did uh, amend the document from a three-year contract to a one-year contract. But, but I guess I, I would ask Steve his opinion on that. If, if the current contract technically ended in May, if, if we renew a contract, would that be from May or from, I guess, the, the renewal point of that? Uh, you're asking me. I have, I have not participated in the, at the public protection and safety or had any involvement in the, in the uh, bid specs or anything like that, but I, I would say it's a one year from when you enter in the contract. Uh, that's what I would assume would be the... Uh, the proposal, it wouldn't make any sense to go back to May. I mean, they're, they can't provide service back in May. They, they'll start whenever the contract is entered into, and it, I think as it's worded, would be one year from the time the contract was executed. If it was your intention to go to May, I think you could make an a, a amendment to do that. Um, but, you know, it's up to your whatever your intention of your committee is. Any other discussion? See none, clerk. Alderman Lassard. What's that? I'm sorry, I didn't see your light. Alderman Lassard. Thank you, Mayor. The other concern I had was um, in in doing this investigation was to keep our business locally in the city, and I had some concerns that Arrow was outside the city, and I did have some conversations with City Attorney, and I've forgotten his name. I'm so sorry. The Queen. We cannot deny a bid if they're not in the city. There, there's, we can't do that. So that's why the half of the people that work for Arrow do live in the city, but the business is located outside the city, and he's in, said he's in the process of buying a business at CarX on Taylor Drive to hopefully be within the city. So that's why we didn't discriminate against what city the business was located in. Thank you. 
Any other discussion? Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess just my points. Speak on louder, here. please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My points to this is, is again, I put a lot of weight on the recommendations of the police chief as well as the purchasing agent, Bernie Rahmer. Um, the company that would be awarded the one-year contract uh, did meet the bid specifications and was the lowest bid that was brought in. He did receive the recommendation from both our purchasing agent as well as the police chief. Um, so they have high confidence that he'll be able to provide the service we're asking him to do. Um, I, again, I do share the concerns of the, the city business compared to just being outside of the city. However, that's not part of our, our bid process. And I, I think if we are going to start um, mixing that into our bid process that the only you know, companies that can bid for a, a, a service like this are companies that reside within the city. I think we'd, we'd be taking ourselves down a, a dangerous road legally. So um, I think we, we based our decision off the best information we had as well as the recommendations from the police department and the purchasing agents. So I do support the, the one year um, granting of this contract and we certainly over the next year can look at other provisions as to how this may or may not be able to be adjusted. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Six ayes, eight noes, one abstention. Motion fails. Seven seven, report a committee from Public Protection and Safety recommending repealing and recreating municipal code for repealing the 2,000 foot requirement for sex offenders. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would move that the RC be accepted and adopted and the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. So move and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion, Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was just uh, hoping for the folks at home that maybe Alderman Van Akron, you could explain what the document means and um, what this entails, because there's a change to our sex offender registry. Just don't want to scare people at home. Alderman Van Akron. Sure. The, the change really entails that if a, a, a person applies for a sex offender residency, residency waiver, um, if they apply for that and they are denied, that they cannot apply for an identical waiver within 90 days. It, it puts a 90-day time space that you can come back and apply for an identical waiver. So uh, again, we've ran into some instances where we've had individuals who have come to three, four meetings in a row, filled out the paperwork, and uh, again, the circumstances of what they're asking for, nothing has changed. They, they just continually come back. Um, again, this puts a 90-day waiting period that if your circumstances do not change, if you're not looking at a different address, um, if any of the concerns by the committee members um, that were addressed at the committee, if none of those things are changed and it's an identical request as before, you have to wait 90 days to come back to the committee or come in front of the committee. So that's the only change that's happening. Thank you. Thank you. Any other question? Any other questions from the council? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Fifteen eyes. Motion carried. <laughs> seven eight through seven eleven will be referred to finance and the committee of the whole. Seven ten through seven fourteen will we be referred to finance and the committee of the whole. Under discussion, all amendment board. Thank you, Mayor. Do I understand you correctly then that? Not only 7, 8, which is indicated that's going to the Committee of the Whole, but 7, 9, 10, and 11 also? Yes. Okay. Very good. And, and then 12, 13, and 14 will be sent to Finance, Strategic, and the Committee of the Whole, as stated. I'm sorry. Or Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor, um, I'm just going to... I think someone's got to make the motion because according to the agenda, it's just going to finance 7, 9, 10, and 11. Second. That wasn't a motion. Oh. So moved. I, I don't think that's right. I think the chair has the option to refer to the committees. Yeah, I don't think you'd need to vote on that, but uh, if somebody is opposed to that, I guess 
two parties there. Any other discussion? Not on that. We'll move on. Ordinance is 8-1 will be referred. Matter laid over. General Ordinance 8-12-13 from Alderman Raisler. Koff, Vanderwilly, and Donahue amending the municipal code to reclassify various positions in the Department of Public Works. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the ordinance be put upon its patches. Any discussion? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. <clears throat> 15 ayes. Motion carries. Matters laid over. Um, I'm sorry, notice of discharge. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. I move that the uh, uh, Public Safety and Protection Committee be discharged from further consideration of RL 63-12-13 and RL 64-12-13 and referred to finance. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded that the documents from Public Protection Safety regarding the um, budget issues be sent to finance. Would there be a friendly amendment to send it to Committee of the Whole and Strategic since all the other ones have been sent there too? Yes, yes. that's what I was going to say. Thank you. So the, the motion then is to have those documents sent to the Committee of the Whole, Strategic, and Finance. Yes. Thank you. Under discussion, Alderman Bourne. That was my question. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess I would encourage and ask the, the council to... Um, deny this request the in reason, a little louder please the reason for the delay at this point is that there is an upcoming strategic fiscal planning meeting um, hopefully within the next week and a half or so hopefully that we can get that done before the next public protection and safety meeting the reason that the uh, public protection and safety committee has not reviewed those two documents yet is that part of the discussion in the strategic fiscal planning um, meeting is going to be setting the objectives and goals of the budget process and it didn't make sense to me to review our budget documents until we have the goals and objectives of the budget process in front of us so the the reason that those two documents have not been acted upon is, is I've held them until we can actually have that strategic fiscal meeting set what the goals and ob objectives of the the um, budget process is going to be before we actually review the uh, the committee's um, budget requests that are in front of us. So I would ask for the patience of the council in a two week extension to hold that meeting and then uh, be able to review those budget requests line by line with the committee rather than circumventing the, the committee's um, ability to review that. Thank you. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, PPNS had um, has had the two meetings since uh, the budget was uh, referred to the committee level. We did, in fact, go through the fire department's portion of the budget and uh, building inspection. The only department we were waiting for is the police chief. Uh, the police chief and, and or a representative was not at the, the first meeting that we discussed the budget. The second meeting, the police chief was present. It wasn't on the agenda. If everybody remembers, uh, a few weeks ago, we did approve a budget schedule, and that's part of the reason why I'm pulling this out, because we uh, um, strategic fiscal planning committee the whole and finance are meeting on this and it's going to be based on the preliminary budget any changes can be made in those three committees and everyone's going to have a kick, the, a kick at the cat at that point but once again we did approve the budget process uh, the schedule every other committee within the council did submit a budget except for PPNS and I couldn't find a really a good reason why to prolong this process even more thank you any other discussion Alderman Riesler Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess as a compromise, <clears throat> I don't see the uh, strategic fiscal committee meeting before the public safety is going to meet. Can we refer it to them as well? And it goes to all four, and then everybody's happy? Is that a motion? A uh, friendly amendment to the motion, yes. Second. It's been moved and seconded to amend the amendment to send it to Public Protection Savvy, Strategic Finance, Committee of the Whole. Anybody else want it or <laughs> under discussion on the amendment only? Okay. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a point of clarification. Are you going to be having a PPNS meeting next Wednesday? I know you indicated you're going to be out of town. Will there be a meeting? Our next scheduled one is not this coming Wednesday, but the next Wednesday. And be so a week from this upcoming Wednesday? Okay. 
Alderman Hammond, can we ask when, when was the strategic planning? As soon as this PPNS budget is approved by PPNS. So later that evening. <laughs> it's got to be referred to if we, if it, if it's got to be referred to the. Alderman Donahue. Planning. Okay, so I just have a sense that there's somebody behind the door with an ax. Um, can just somebody tell me what's going on? <laughs> uh, this is a little nutty. Um, so just someone really tell me what's happening. I, I'm interested in this. Um, surely somewhere there is an answer lurking, and I would be interested. Alderman Donahue, thank you. Alderman Van Ackeren. Thank you. Um, as I stated, I held it off the agenda on purpose for the fact that I, it was my understanding we'd be having a strategic fiscal planning meeting before my next meeting in which we would discuss the goals and objectives of the budget process. And I thought it was important to have that laid out before reviewing our budget as to whether or not we should be looking for cuts. Should we be looking for a zero-based budget? Are we looking at 2 to 3% increases? You know, what really is the goal and objective of the overall budget process? And then how is our committee supposed to be reflective of that? So that really was the goal of that. Um, I understand that it won't meet the budget schedule that certainly was set up. And, and like I said, that, that solely is, is um, my responsibility. But, but again, I did hold that off because it was my understanding we'd be having this meeting here shortly. And it was my hope to have those budget goals and objectives in place before reviewing it at our committee level. Alderman Carlson, is it on the amendment or on the document itself? I was actually going to try to attempt to answer her question. Oh. Are you going to continue to attempt to? I could, right. yes. Alderman Carlson. <laughs> uh, quite uh, frankly, it's all, it, hold, the holding of this document really comes down to the garbage fee and that document going to strategic fiscal planning. So that's really what the holdup is. There's really no other reason to hold it because we've had plenty of time to review it. Um, how many months ago we directed the department heads and the city administrator or the, to come up with the budget. They had a goal. That's the budget they presented. Later on down the line, there's a new plan put into place uh, to repeal the garbage fee, and that's really what this is about. All right, the motion is to Alderman Donahue. And pertinent to the amendment to the amendment, <clears throat> I guess the question that I would have then with a plethora of committees that are going to attend to the budget, and I would certainly defer to President Hammond on this, but what is the most sensible way that we proceed, because that will influence my vote. If it's a question of strategic financial planning not meeting until after PPNS, then that's an issue. Um, I would expect, expect that the strategic committee meeting would be before Committee of the Whole. To me, that would be more of a, a, a planning and, and seeking kind of discussion. Um, so. Tell me what is the best thing, tell us all, what the best way is to handle this for the council and for all the folks we represent, and that's how I'll vote. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the goal of the budget timeline was to have all the budgets um, reviewed by the respective committees, go to strategic fiscal planning um, either this week, if most of the committee could be there, or next week with also finance looking at it on one, uh, next Monday. Committee of the Whole looking at it on the 31st. Yes. And um, coming back to the council the following uh, first council meeting of, of uh, August. So that was the laid out timeline and all of the discussion up until um, just recently. So um, that would be the way I would um, propose seeing it, would be to go to strategic fiscal finance next week and then Committee of the Whole the following week with recommendations going back to the council uh, the first week of August. Okay, the motion is to send it to Strategic Finance, Strategic Fiscal Planning, Finance Committee of the Whole, and Public Protection and Safety. Hearing no more, the call, clerk will call the roll. I gotta proceed, I gotta proceed. I'm sorry, I didn't see that when I started. Thank Last you, uh, I have a procedural question for either the clerk or the city attorney. Do we have, is that friendly motion, is that friendly amendment, is that accepted and we don't have to vote on that separately? Because I'd really like to vote on the, uh, I'd really like to vote on the uh, friendly amendment to send it back to finance. 
Uh, I'm sorry, was it, was it to go back to finance or pu public? Go back to PPNS. It was to go back to PPNS. That was right. a friendly amendment? To include PPNS in there, yes. So it go to all four. Okay, can, do we, can we vote on that friendly amendment or do we have to vote on this whole package of where it's going to go? Well, the fr friendly amendment generally goes back to the person who made the original motion. And I didn't accept it. And if the person making the motion agrees to the friendly amendment to amend his original motion or, or her original motion, then it's accepted. Otherwise, if, if uh, the person making the original motion doesn't accept it as a friendly amendment, then you would need to vote on that. You didn't accept it, Alderman Carl? No. Okay. Okay, so now the amendment is, or Friendly motion is to send it to finance, strategic fiscal planning, and to committee the committee whole. The whole. <clears throat> and we have a question. I just have a question, Claire. Alderman Race. Wouldn't we vote on the friendly amendment then if it wasn't accepted? Uh, need a motion. If there's a motion. I thought you there wanted, was. You would need to make a motion. Something okay, I, I will do that. I'll make a motion to... Um, vote on the friendly amendment to include pp and s in it. It's been moved and seconded to amend to go to to public protection and safety to be added to the other three. Clerk will call the mold, the roll on the amendment only. Maybe. Give me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> You want to add PPNS to the list? Is that the amendment? Yes. Okay. This is to uh, approve an amendment to add PPNS to the current list <clears throat> that's in the motion previous. Eight ayes, seven noes. Motion carried. Back to the original. Clerk will call the roll. Hang on. All four committees now. I gotta go find it now. Come on. Uh oh. <laughs> What was that last uh, school? Uh -oh. okay, okay. Love this modern technology. Hey, give me a break here. And then become an unfriendly amendment because he didn't accept it. I don't know. Becomes a forced amendment. Take a, Let's do a, a paper roll, roll where I'm manual. Oh. Take a manual roll call. I still have to get back in to do the rest That's of it. Right. <clears throat> Actually, I don't. Never mind. Yeah, we're almost There's done. only one more thing. All right, the motion was to pass. No, okay, I got to back up here. The many re You've recommendations was sending it, or the amendment was to, set to send it to four committees. Let's back up from there. We first have, we have two motions. First, we have to have a motion to discharge PPNS, yes or no. Yes. Okay. Then you have a motion to refer, and we wouldn't even, yeah, then we have a motion to refer to the four committees. I need two motions. The first motion is to discharge. pull it from PPNS. I thought we did it. Yeah. All in fee, uh, Did not. Clerk will call the roll. Bellinger. Aye. Uh, Boren. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Decker. No. Donahue. No. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Koth? Aye. Lassard? Aye. Lewandowski? Aye. Matichek? No. I'm sorry? No. No. Raisler? Aye. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? Aye. <laughs> and Wangaman? No. 
haven't done this in a while. <laughs> Ten eyes, five noes. Okay, now it's we need a motion to refer refer it to the four committees. Right. That's there. Yep. And we can do an all eyes if you want. That's fine. I'll, all in, I'll adjust it. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. No. no. No motion. We need a motion There's first. No motion. Okay, we need a motion first to, to refer. Refer. Alderman Carlson. Make a motion to refer it to. PP&S, Committee of the Whole Strategic Fiscal Planning and Finance. Second. So move and seconded to refer to the four committees. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. I'm mean, sorry. <laughs> Opposed? Aye. Motion we take, carries. We have to take a roll. There was, we're taking a roll. There was not a unanimous. I don't think that's true, but okay. I didn't think I, I can't clerk tell. Roll. Well, we took, go ahead. Bellinger? Aye. Boren? No. Carlson? No. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? No. Koth? No. Lassard? Aye. Lewandowski? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? No. And Wangaman? Aye. Ten eyes, five noes. Motion carries. Other matters? City Attorney. 11.2 is an RO by the Fire Chief, Section 50-494 of the Municipal Code, uh, submitting his quarterly report for the period commencing April 1, 2012 and ending June 30, 2012. That will be sent to Public Protection and Safety. 11.3 is a resolution by Alderperson Hammond committing fund balances in accordance with GASB 54. That will be referred to finance. Do you want that also to go to strategic and committee of the whole since it's talking about your fund balances? Everything else is. <laughs> Just where everything else is? I don't care. Okay, this will go to finance, strategic, and committee of the whole. 11.4 is communication from Alderperson Hammond requesting that resolution number 2340304, establishing a policy for applying undesignated fund balance for the general funds ensuing year's budget. Uh, I assume be repealed, it's not in there, but and to draft a resolution to establish a fund balance policy in accordance with GASB 54. This will be sent to Finance Committee of the Whole and Strategic. Anything else? Uh, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Clerk will call the roll. Oh, okay. Okay. Got 11. Uh, hang on, hang 11, on, hang on. He found one more. one is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2013 and June 30, 2014. That will just be sent to lawn licensing. Now a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Moved and seconded to adjourn. Oh, Clerk, all, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried.